Hey YouTube, what's going on? What's going on? Thank you for joining me today. This is going to be kind of overview of some things I have learned along the way while doing dominoes. Okay, so we all know as we learn different things, we improve what we're doing. So I've been making update videos all along on the new things that um I've learned, but these are real short things that I didn't think were long enough for a video. So I'm gonna put them together in this one little video. So y'all ready? We'll go ahead and get started. Hey y'all, hey YouTube channel and my Facebook group CCPAD. Okay, we're going to start with some of the things that I use for my dominoes. And you might know already know this if you're in one of the Facebook groups I'm in, especially my group, CCBAB. So, let me get a little bit closer. So, <clears throat> this is a UV um, lamp. And I use UV resin with this. And this is the kind that I use less resin. I use that to finish my domino. Say if I have a domino with a ridge on the back where it didn't completely seal. Like this one has a ridge on the back. I use this UV resin instead of going, instead of just putting more putting more resin in there, I will use the UV resin instead of putting more epoxy resin. It's a simpler fix. And if it's not that bad, it doesn't take that much. So that's the UV stuff. Then we have silicone tools. So I have so many silicone tools. And this is what I use to mix my epoxy with, okay? I don't want to, um, I used to use the popsicle sticks, but why keep buying stuff over and over when you can just use these silicone things and they're reusable. Scissors, this is what I use to trim my dominoes when I take them out of the mold, and you'll be seeing that later, so I use scissors. Sanding my dominoes, emery board. I haven't had dominoes that were so bad that the emery board didn't work. I've never had to pull out my electric file, or, you know, the fingernail file. I've never had to pull out extra strength sandpaper. So emery boards is what I use. This right here is the epoxy that I have started using. Y'all, this stuff crystal clear. You hear me? This stuff is crystal clear. Embossing tools. This is what I use to do the dots with on my um, dominoes. If I'm not using a marker, I try to use a marker because to me it's easier. But if I'm not using a marker, I use this. And if I'm putting UV resin in the dots, which I do sometimes, I use this to put the resin on there. Okay. Ink press adhesive vinyl. Y'all, this is some awesome vinyl, printable vinyl. This is what I use for my decals. This is what I use for anything I need printable adhesive vinyl for. Okay. So that's just some of the stuff I'm looking around to see what else. Of course, 90% of better alcohol. I use a heck of a lot of silicone mixing gadgets. Again, to me, it's just easier to use them than to use stuff I got to pay for over and over again. Now, I do use my Dollar Tree cups. This is how I measure my epoxy, y'all. I know I use these lines <laughs> on these cups, so 
Unless I'm doing a tiny amount and then I use the medicine cups and I actually use their measurements on there. So let's get into it. I only got a couple of more little things that I'm actually going to be showing. All right. We're off to see the wizard. Okay, since we over here in the epoxy area, I will show you that you can see I have several small epoxy molds that I have set up around my domino station. And that's because that's what I do with my extra um, epoxy. I'd rather have too much epoxy than not enough, unless it's clear epoxy. But if I'm mi mixing a color, I don't want to be short on epoxy. So most of the time, I'm a tad bit over. And I just use ink pen molds, um, shot glass molds, ashtray molds. There are always some molds. This one, you see this one? I'm waiting on some more. Epoxy is not finished. So, see, it's a lot of space left in there. I haven't had any extra epoxy lately. So, yes, that's one thing we're doing. Now we're going to demold these dominoes right here, and I'm going to show you how, how I trim them with my scissors and emery board. Okay, hopefully my camera won't fall off. So... These are new molds that I have, and I'm getting ready to do some um, dominoes. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four sets of dominoes um, today, just today. So one thing I do when I have my molds is mark them. And the reason I mark them to get my decals as close to purpose as I can. So uh, we know that the middle line is the middle going that way so i just line up my ruler okay and i just mark okay i use a permanent marker this is the only thing i could find at the time then i come back and i go the opposite direction so i find the center you could do it either way you want i i Usually I eyeball it. I'm pretty good at it. But you find the center and you mark it going this way. Okay? What this does for you is don't use this kind of marker either. Use a permanent marker that you can see on your um on your molds. What this does, this helps me when I'm putting my decals on. If I need a point, you know, reference, so I'll say at this line, that's where I line up the R or where I line up the helmet on the football or where I line up the whatever. That way, when I line them up, there is a better chance that I get my, um, my decals on straight than if I just try to eyeball it, okay? So you just go down the middle. Okay, then go the other way. Okay, and you also can do do markings for whatever. If you're marking, say you're um you have a small decal and you want all of them to start right there. Instead of trying to eyeball it, just go ahead and put the marks on there. The marks will come off. You can use a paint pen or a permanent marker. The permanent marker comes out, the paint pen does also. Okay, that's a good tip. Okay, using nature's oven. Let's just put your domino mold in the box and taking it outside and let the heat, because it's summertime, go ahead and cure your dominoes. Make sure you cover your dominoes. I put mine in a cardboard box. And I just um, go ahead and close the box up. And if it's got holes in it, I'll co cover the holes up so the bugs won't get into it. Okay, it's 7.30. This is not even a, um, it's an overcast day. It's not even sunny out here. And I didn't put it out to after 5. And it's 7.30. It's probably been done for about 
maybe about 30 minutes to an hour. Usually take about maybe, I said for this, I, I gave it two hours. I just happened to be on the phone, but I gave it two hours because these tournament size, these are the bigger size. But nature's oven. I want you to see how clear this freaking epoxy. Oh my God. No more environmental tech for me. Look at this, y'all. I poured these dominoes. I sprayed once and fell asleep. Um, I only stirred it for three minutes. I did exactly what the what the um pack said. I didn't use no heat. I didn't use no none of that. I don't have no holes in there. Oh my God, look. I don't have to buff it. It ain't no scratches on the surface of these. I, I usually have scratches on the surface. I have to buff the surface. Look at this. Oh. Y'all don't worry about them fingernails. Um, eventually that polish gonna come off. I mess with a lot of acetone, but look. Glass, I say. Do y'all see the bubbles? Huh? Oh my goodness, I'm so impressed. Okay, we are here at Cricut Design Space in a canvas. This is a fresh canvas. Now, I'm just gonna show you something that I use when I do most of my decals, okay? The first thing I want to show you, and it's a video on this out, is how to upload your patterns. And you'll see what we're going to use that for. So right here is where you normally upload your images on the left side. Right next to it is upload patterns that's on the right side. And you'll do it the same way. You hear upload pattern, browse. You find what pattern you want or what picture, actually not pattern, but what picture you want. I'm just going to grab in a picture with like this. Um, okay. Wrong drive. Okay, I'm going to grab me. So you name the pattern, and this would be... Um, Brad pick, I guess, whatever. Upload it. Okay, so we've successfully uploaded that pattern. The next thing I do when I'm making decals in um, Design Space, I go right here on the left-hand side and I hit images, then type rounded square, search, Right here, all the rounded squares or what they classify as rounded squares come up. And there's 23, over 2,300 results. Well, I'm not wanting to look through all that and I don't really want to pay for any. So I go right over here to the left-hand side and I'm gonna check the ownership I want to look at. I want to look at anything that I uploaded. Okay, I didn't upload that. <laughs> anything I purchased. I definitely didn't purchase some of these. These must be free or something. I have no idea. And then free. So that's the only thing I want to look at. I want to look at some stuff that I ain't got to mess with. Some of this stuff might be around the square. Some of the stuff is not. You know, we're using AI to do that, artificial intelligence. So um, once I get there, I go and find me one that looks sort of like a domino. We'll go ahead and take this one. I click on it and then I insert the image. Once I insert the image, I make this image the actual size of the domino. Let me repeat that. The actual size of the domino, not the decal, the actual size of the domino. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as my pattern. I mean, my template. I'm sorry. I'm going to use this as my template. So if I'm going to actually design something, I would change this to the actual size of the domino. So I'm going to unlock it. And the width is going to be one. 
and the height is gonna be two, okay? That's just um, what I use for professional, okay? So if I'm gonna design on it, I'll make it my um, the size I want, and then I'll lock the ratio back because once I lock it, I can change it and it keeps the same ratio. So I'll change the ratio to make it larger so I can actually design it and then I'll go to design. So this is what I do if I need to design text, say I'm putting my name or some whatever. If I'm doing text or I'm doing a picture or, or something that I'm gonna actually upload and I want to actually um, let me change that to white. I want to actually design on there. This is what I use. I'll go ahead and I'll get me around the square, make it the exact size of the domino. Then once I do that, I'll go ahead and flatten it or whatever and then print it. Or if it's, um, if it's, vinyl i'll go ahead and do you know do the cutting of the vinyl put it back to the right size and make it the size of the vinyl okay so if i'm just putting one picture on there i usually just upload it as a pattern so the way you upload it as a pattern you get your basis cut right here and that's the um, rounded square you go up here to operation you do the drop down and you're gonna change that to a print then cut standard. Once you change it to a print then cut standard, you go up here and you hit the color square. Once you hit the color square, say print type, you're gonna do the drop down and you're gonna do pattern. <clears throat> it's gonna go to all the patterns that you have uploaded. So I just uploaded this one. Okay, and once I upload that, I don't want it like that. So I'm gonna go down here to edit pattern. And you can actually edit your pattern from right here. I would probably want it at close to 100% to start with and then you can move it. That's gonna take forever. Let's hit 50 and see what we got. I almost said it. I don't be laughing in my picture. Okay, let's try negative 50. Probably negative 100. I'm just guessing, you know, you'll get it. Um, the way you want it, you, you manipulate it with this is what I'm trying to get you to see. You can rotate it. Like if you need your picture to be sideways, you can flip it. Okay. So that is the way I make my decal. So once I get it in there and get it the way I want it, now this is going to be a print and cut. So for a print and cut, I don't want it the same exact size as my domino. And the reason why, if I get it the same size as my domino, it's a chance when I go to print and put it on there and I put my um, last coat, coat of clear epoxy, it won't get all the way down the size. So this is where I go ahead and I put it what I um what I normally want my decal to be. So it'll be one I mean point eight and one point eight or whatever measurements you use. So that's what I do for my dominoes to make the decal. Now once I make my decal, <coughs> excuse me or make whatever I'm gonna put on the bag, make the um, design. I'll go over here to make it. Now, I don't wanna make duplicates right here. That makes, you, no, you don't wanna make duplicates right there. You wanna go to make it. Yep, it's taking a minute. Okay, so once we go to make it, we'll see that we have one design right here, okay? So we know we got 28 dominoes. So you can change the number of copies right here. You'll go ahead and you'll put your 28 up here. You'll hit apply, either hit e um, enter, and there go your 28 dominoes, okay? So you don't 
have to, on the canvas, make 27 copies. You can make your dominoes like this, make one and then make, you could do the same thing if you had, um, let's take that away. Say you had did a um, cut shape, say a shape or say you had writing the name, whatever your name was. Why am I, what am I doing? So you can do the same thing for, for um, vinyl. So if I had that vinyl here, say this one was orange, whatever. I had that here and I wanted to change and I wanted to make 20 of them, you will do the same thing up here. Same thing, say these are two little things. I'll go ahead and put this extra. If I was just making this name in gray and this square in yellow, I could actually move these onto the same pad. All I have to do is make sure that I have it the same, you know, on the pad, the colors on my pad, my actual cutting mat, the same as what I want the color to be. So for instance, if I'm going to take this step and I'm going to move this object, I want to move it to this mat. So it'll move to this mat and then I'll put it where I want. Now I just got to remember to put my yellow vinyl right here and put my gray vinyl right here. That way I don't have to take it out, take the mat out. I mean, cut, then take the mat out, put some more um, vinyl on there and then put it back in. So if it's just a couple of things, I always do my design and then I either change them to the same color on the other side or just move them in there. So that is something that I want to show you about the dominoes. That's how I make my decals for the back. Now, if I'm in silhou silhouette, it's basically the same thing, except on silhouette, the pattern fill, when you pattern fill in silhouette, you actually take your um, file explorer where you have your pictures at and you drop it into silhouette. So I'll show you that also when I do a silhouette, um, when I go into silhouette later on, I'll make a video for that to show you how to do the patterns on there. Okay, I'm going to show you really quickly on Silhouette how to do the pattern fill. I am so sorry I'm holding my cell phone in front of this computer. I was editing the video and then realized I forgot to take the Silhouette part. So, we're here in Silhouette. The first thing you're going to do for the um, dominoes back is you're going to go over here and you're going to grab a rounded triangle. I mean, rounded triangle. Rounded rectangle, okay? So that's just how I do it. You grab the rounded rectangle. Then I come over here on the pad and I draw it. Go back up, deselect, because if not, you'll be drawing triangles all over the place. And right here, of course, you're gonna size it the way, the size that you need it. You can go up here to the top um, width is gonna be, let's do two by one. Just a standard, um, for the dominoes. But like the professional and the standard, this is the size of the domino. So I want to fill this with a pattern just like I did on, um, design space. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna go to library. Okay, once I go to library, these are the, the, the designs that I have did. So I'm going to go over here to the side of library, and I'm going to hit patterns. Once I do that, these are the patterns that I have in my computer. To add something to patterns, all you have to do is drop, drag and drop. So I have windows. I will open up. My file explorer, let me make that smaller so you can see it next to the, um, hold on. Wait a minute. Give me a second. 
Okay, I'm gonna open up my smart file explorer. So I got it open. Now I need to get it small so I can see my silhouette. So I'm gonna restore it down and it's still kind of large. So I'm just gonna move this over by grabbing the size. You know, you can make it bigger or smaller. So I'm just gonna grab the size so I move it over and you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to find a pattern that I want to do a domino with. So let me just go and find anything. Let me find something. Definitely not Arvin. So, okay, so I have Betty Boop on here. So if I wanted to do Betty Boop, let me get back. So I have my file explorer right here. This is my file explorer. This is pattern. So all I do is I grab the picture. And I drag and drop. Okay. Once I drag and drop, that picture is in there. There she is right there. So I'm going to go back up to design. And this is the um, shape we made. So I'm going to highlight that shape. Then I'm going to go to the color palette. Open up the color palette. So this is color. This is gradient, and this right here is pattern field. So I'm going to go up here to the top, hit them dots, and wait for it to pick up. <laughs> okay, once I hit them dots, this is how you feel your pattern. Now, just like Cricut, it has some, well, Design Spaces has some already uploaded, but if you go down below the already uploaded ones, these are the ones that you added, okay? So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna hit this Betty Boop, and she is in my pad. I mean, in my shape of the dominoes. Now, of course, we can't put on like that unless that's what we want. That's actually cute, but that ain't what we're trying to do. So once I do that, I can change the pattern feel. How it's filled in there by going to advanced options. Okay, once I go to advanced options, these are all the different ways, like design space, that I can change my pattern, okay? I can mirror the pattern. I can change the ratio. I can rotate the pattern. This is the most important thing that I found is the scale. So you can make it bigger or larger. Okay, so let me see if I can get both of them in there. Okay, so I'm going to change the scale of this. I'm going to make it smaller. Oh, I got the highlighter for it. But I'm going to change the scale. I'm going to make it smaller. you get more in there. Okay. That's by sign the scale. Okay, or you do pattern pan, or pan pattern, I'm sorry. Let me get it kind of clear. Uh-oh, sorry, won't focus, but it says pan pattern, P-A-N pattern, P-A-T-T-E-R-N. So once you hit pan pattern, that's where you move it around. So you hit pan pattern, then you can go up here, and you can just grab this little bitty white circle let me get closer to it this little y'all i'm sorry about that focus i guess i should have did it on the computer but it's a little white circle in there you grab that and you can move the pattern all the way around lord i hope y'all can understand that it looks very blurry but that is pan pattern all you do is hit it then that thing, uh, um, highlight, it'll come up. So you can pan the pattern, get a legs in there. So that is the only thing you do for pattern fill in, um, silhouette. Sorry, I didn't do it the right way. But if you have any questions, just drop your questions below on this part. Okay, so... I had did these dominoes. These are not really for anybody. And um, 
they had been sitting in the in this mold some little flowers I had been um trying to play with. So it was different it's different flowers on the front, but I went ahead and finished them. And I was not gonna put a decal on them, so these are damn near full to the top. I don't really have room to um pour anything, so I'm gonna add it with a glove finger. Now another thing happened. I really don't mind on this because it's not a real big thing. It's nobody's order really to tell the truth. Um, maybe I'll sell it, but it's nobody's order for now, so I'm just doing it to be doing it and to help with this video. So these ones, um, this one and this one I took out. So I don't want the um, epoxy to run over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a dot of glue around the edge right there, right there. Then I'm gonna wipe it off the dot, off the um, where I went over it. Um, I get a Q-tip. A little tiny one, so the big ones that don't matter. A Q-tip, um, toothpick, whatever. And these was not open that big, so... Don't look that bad, but I should have did this. And what you you normally do since my um my epoxy is already mixed. What I would normally do is put it down in between. When I took it out, just glue it back in there, and it'll it'll still pop out, but it'll keep that epoxy from going going down there. So I would do it like that earlier, in enough time for it to seal. And that will keep the epoxy from going down in there and messing up my dominoes. But, you know, normally you don't take them out. I'm just getting it in there. Trying to get it in there. So normally don't take your dominoes out. And if you do like me, and I put glue down there and I thought about it, I should have showed y'all, so I popped the seal again, and yes, that's what. But when I took it out, I just put a little glue at the top and stuck it in there and held it like that, just so the um, epoxy won't go down there. So what I'm going to do with this epoxy is I'm just putting little bitty drops and I'm going to go back and I'm going to smooth it with my finger because it's not really enough room to pour because these are damn near to the top. Again, I was just playing around and I was like, well, let me finish these dominoes. And I found a cigar box for them so that's what the decal is that's the cigar box that i'm gonna put it in i happen to find a little cigar box that's um has flowers on it so there's flowers in here so i'm just gonna show you how i'm gonna do it and then i'm gonna go ahead and do it
Okay, I'm just making sure it come out to the edges. Sort of like you would do with UV resin, but I don't want to use that much UV resin, so I'm doing regular epoxy resin. I just don't want to pour it because I don't have enough room. I just made a little bit of epoxy. So I'll come back and I'll get all that epoxy that I that comes out of the um the little hole. Okay. I don't got 20 minutes to work with this and I'm running my mouth, so I see you on the other end. Okay, it's about about three or four hours later. And it was just a thin coat that I put on with my finger. And this is the one I put the glue on. So, just a thin layer. Look at that. So, if you change your mind and you just got a tad bit of, of um, space, just a little bit, you ain't got to have a lot. You can put it on with your finger, and it's still a self-level. Now, this one I have to fix, and I'll probably show myself fixing that because I dropped some on it. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to show you what these dominoes look like. So it's a roll of each one. So, let's see. Hold on, let me get the light. I had the worst lighting in the world. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's the tip. If you fill it up and then you feel like Hey, now I want to put a decal. You can still do it with your finger. And you don't have to do the UV resin. You just take your little glove finger. Put a little line down the middle is the way I do it. Some people dip their finger in there. But I put a, just a, a little line of resin down the middle. Then I take my finger and I smear it. Okay. Okay, so... I have my little tools I'm going to use to do the back set of dominoes, and I'll be talking you through. Again, this is just a little overview of some things I do now to do my dominoes. Um, the first thing I will tell you is when you get ready to demold your dominoes, take them out of the mold, trim them right then. Don't take them out. Sit them on the counter. Take 5 million pictures of them. As you take them out, trim them. And the reason being, if you have any overpour, so it's overpour. I pour it over. If you have any overpour, it's still kind of soft while it's in the uh, mold. But when you take it out, it gets really, really hard. So... Trim your dominoes as soon as you take them out, okay? So, these are some dominoes. The first thing I do is I cut my dominoes apart if I have overpour. I try not to have that. See, it's very soft now, but if I was to leave it sitting out for a long time, maybe an hour or so, that part would get very hard like this. This is very hard right here because this thing about probably about a year old or whatever. So I got precision scissors. I cut my overpour off with my scissors. Okay. Just take the scissors and run it along the side of the domino. And you just cut the overpour off. Well, you see mine just pop off. But I cut the overpour off and I run my finger along there to make sure I got it all. Now these are precision scissors. They get pretty close. If I do as soon as I get them out, 
I don't usually have to use my um file, my emery board. I don't usually have to use that because I try not to pour over. But that's what you do. You want to make sure that you do it as soon as they come out. It's easier to cut. So these are precision scissors. Before I had these, and I have some very tiny ones also, but before I had these, my favorite ones to use were, of course, my Cricut scissors. I love these scissors. So if I have a little bit of left that I can't get with the scissors, this is what I do before I um, grab that emery board. Y'all don't be worried about that ash again. If your hands looking all pretty, you ain't doing the work. <laughs> I just washed my hands, y'all. So, if I have just a little bit, I'll take my scissors, open them up, and just run it along there and just trim that little bit off. See that little bit? So, I'll do that if it's just a little bit that I can't get with the scissors because I want that emery board to be my last result, okay? So, that part right there, I could have cut. I don't make nothing, make no extra moves. If I can help it. Because I, I want to avoid the sand because I don't want to scratch up my dominoes. But then that's another thing you have to do. You have to reshine them if you scratch them up. Although, no problem with reshining them. That's not a problem. Okay, so after I trim my dominoes, and I'm going to leave them in there so we can go on forward. Now I get them. So this has some glitter sticking out. So I just, because I have that diamond glitter on here. These money bones, by the way. So that's money, diamond back. So, once I finish that, the next thing we'll do is the backs of the dominoes. Hold on, let me go get some. Okay, I'm going to get some paint so I'll show you from scratch. Hold one sec. Okay, I just did this and I forgot to turn the camera on. So, <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to show you how I do the backs. So I went in my handy dandy box of dominoes. This is where I put all the stuff I be messing up. Because I try new stuff on these dominoes. I, I, ain't through, I haven't thrown any away yet. So I just get my paint out and I get my embossing set. And this is the set I use off of Amazon. It was like $5. It's five different ones, but they got double heads on it. So it's 10 different sizes. I just put my paint in a cup, and this is just regular acrylic paint. Dip, dip the size I'm going to use in there, and then I just dot it. Now, my what I like to do, and this is if I have to use acrylic paint. What I like to do more than acrylic paint is use metallic pens or colored pens. So you can get paint pens. I'm on this metallic paint kit. So I got a set of metallic pens. We got a couple of sets of them. So that's why I'm on that kick now. So you just can take your metallic, metallic pen or whatever you have. Let's see. These pretty skinny. I don't even know if this pen is going to fit in here. These dang on lines is over right. You can't even see that. So if I had something that I could see. Okay, there we go. I'll just take my little metallic pens. Now it's up to you whether you're going to sell it or not. 
or whether you're going to do your lines or not. Sometimes I don't do the lines. Well, most of the times I don't do the lines. Uh, I don't know why I just don't. Not because they're smaller, because I have domino sets now that I use that lines and holes are a little bit larger than the ones that I started with, because these little thin ones was giving me heck. But you do that for the do the dots. Now, to, to put acrylic on the dots, not acrylic, to put UV resin on the dots, do the same thing that you do with your... Um, with your paint. I just put a little bit in the medicine cup and I just put a dot in there. Because I have UV lights in my garage, I can't let it just sit there because it's going to actually get hard because I have UV lights in here. So I just do the same thing. I dip it in there, make sure the paint is already completely dry and this will set another set. And I just take it and run it around. And this is how you seal them. And it's very easy. It don't take long. And the way I do it, I go ahead and paint all the dominoes. By the time I finish painting the dominoes, the um, paint will be dry. And I go around and I do the UV resin. So I just take mine. Once I finish that, and I just put it in my dryer. Clean the um, UV resin off. You just get your little alcohol and spray it because you don't want that to be stuck on your embossing tool. So another thing I, um, that happens is we get these dominoes that have this little concave area where it's sunk down. Now, this is really big. So if I was to get a domino mold and I was getting ready to demold them, and I saw it down that this much, I would go ahead and leave it in the mold and put some regular epoxy in there, okay? This is over-exaggerated. I wouldn't try to um, put UV resin in this if I had so many like this, unless it was just one. But um, this was just me playing with some dominoes, some extra epoxy. So what I do for this is I just take my UV resin, and if it's a color, you can mix your UV resin with a color. So I just take my UV resin and I hate using all this, but I want to show you. So I'll take it. Make sure it hit every corner. If it's not, you could take a Q-tip, a um, toothpick. I take I use this um, embossing tool sometime and just get it from corner to corner. Once you get it from corner to corner. Make sure it don't non run down the side. If it run down the side, all you have to do is get you a um, paper with a little alcohol and run it along the side. So then once you finish that, you go ahead and you put it in your epoxy dryer. And I usually do three or four cycles of 60 seconds. So this is where we put the UV resin in the holes so you can see now hard as a rock so that's sealing the dominoes now if you have to trim your dominoes like this is very hard because this has been out forever I'm putting it under my desk I don't want that stuff popping you know how it pop like a toenail or something and it hit you in the eye. So, you, it might come a time where, even though that cut is a little jagged, I've never had to use more than these emery boards. And I just take the emery board, and 
what you want to do is try not to hit the sides of your dominoes. Try not to hit the sides of your dominoes. So I just take mine and put the top, which is the side that I'm going to be um, going to be filing. I get it, and I could go by the side like this with my my emery board tilted out. I don't want to tilt it toward it, so I go like this with my emery board tilted out. So I'm just doing this and not. If you do it like this, you're going to sand the whole side of your domino, and ain't nothing wrong with the side of your domino, so you don't want to do that. So I kind of tilt it to the side. So I'm only hitting what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to file, okay? So if you have to trim it, if if the little scissor trick don't work, because even though this got a little pour, I can still do it with the scissors. But if I'm doing a lot, there's a chance that I might scrape off too much on the scissors and it's easier if it's a lot just to do it with the with the file if i let it stay out too long and it got so hard that i couldn't cut it off okay like this is almost too hard all another thing you'll want to do with your dominoes is shining your dominoes now, my dominoes are, my molds are mate. So that's a mate mold. If you look at that mold, it's a mate mold. I ain't never had a problem with it. But some people want their dominoes to be shine. So you can use the flitz. And I think I'm going to make a separate video for using this flitz because I got to get better with it. But... This is flitz, and this is metal and plastic and fiberglass polish. So the way I saw people using it is just taking it and rubbing it on like you do the turtle wax. They use this. So it's mostly used for big projects like when you make like resin art. It's mostly used for that, but I saw a lady do it with dominoes and her Dremel tool, and I'm gonna try that, and then if I perfect it, I'll show it to you. But if you're gonna shine your dominoes, I just get me a soft cloth, and it's just a Dollar Tree cloth, and I get me some EVOO. I get me a little dot of EVOO. That's a lot, not that much. You don't even have to do that much. Okay, so. I don't need that much. But I just take a little dot and I wipe it on my dominoes. And what I do is I go down the line and I just wipe it down the front of all of them. Once I finish wiping it down the front, then I get me a clean spot. And I'll come back and I'll, I'll buff them off. So you don't have to worry about this. This won't make your dominoes um, greasy. This domino dirty. This will not make your dominoes greasy. It won't make them slide off each other. Just give them a little sheen. You can run it along the side where you put the, um, where my little spot at? I don't even know where my little spot went. Dang. You can put that on your little spot where you sanded it to bring back that color. And then you just buff it off. When that shine come back, you won't see the little white edge that you have when you buff. Okay, these some. These are just some practice dominoes. I think I made them on one of my videos. So, once you get through with your... Oh, y'all, I overcooked this. But anyway, once it's finished, this got a hard shell. Now, 
It's just like regular epoxy. What I won't wouldn't do, a lot of people ask me, can you make your dominoes with all UV resin? I suppose in theory you could, but that's a lot of resin and that's this stuff is very expensive. So I wouldn't. But once you do the top with the with the UV resin, some people say it's a little sticky, and that's because they don't cure it all the way. All you have to do is sit your dominoes in a pan, take them outside, and let them sit in the sun for about 20 to 30 minutes, and then go ahead and finish curing in the sun, okay? Or you can put it back in a UV um, lamp. I usually just take mine outside and sit them on the... Um, on the car, I have a pan of them. Let me show you, I just brought it in the house. Okay, you'll see me doing these in a video. I did not do these with UV resin. However, we know a full cure on dominoes is not the six or seven hours that we leave in our, um, leave them in the mold. Sometimes you have to get that order out. So once I take it out, if they feel like they are gonna stick to each other, and it's a sunny day. I'll take them outside and just send them in the sun and it'll go ahead and finish the curing process so they don't stick together. All right. All right. Let's move on. Okay. Before we get to this last part, I just want to take the time to thank you all for looking at my videos. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. But tell me what I did wrong. Make sure you hit that bell so you can be notified every time I upload new content. Okay, we're just going to end this where we probably should have started. And that's getting your molds prepped. So what I do is nothing really fancy. Um, I clean my molds and all my silicone stuff. If I don't clean it out with alcohol while it's still wet, if it um, dries up, I just use tape. So um, you can use any kind of tape, really. You can use packing tape. I use the Gorilla Tape because it's really good and I had it here. Um, you can use the painter tape, any kind of tape. So all you do is you take the tape, if I can take it, okay, and you just dab at what you're trying to clean up. So this one has some, um, dried epoxy in it. Let me see if I can get you closer. Let's see. Okay, so all I do is just take the tape and I'm just crazy. I'll never tear my tape until I finish. So I just take the tape and I just pat it and get the epoxy up, okay? And this is one of the, um, molds that I did earlier in the video where I um, I actually marked the mold and you can see some of the markers have came off but that's okay all I do is put them back on there much easier than having um, my decals off center I rather mark my molds over and over again so that's how I clean out the molds. I do the same thing for all of my other um, silicone stuff for the, move this out the way. Okay, for like the measuring cups and stuff, all you do is just pop them inside out and the uh, epoxy will pop out and then you can clean them. It would be hard to do when I'm trying to do it on camera. Any other time, I could turn it inside out with no problem. So all I do is just tap it on there and it'll um, pick everything up. Same thing with everything else. 
if you have um your your um serum tool that you don't actually clean because I usually just spray it, but you can actually leave it in there and you can actually pull the little bit of epoxy out there if you leave it in there in the bottom of your mixing thing, it'll pull it out and then you can just peel the epoxy, the hardened epoxy off. Um I did a video earlier when I first started doing these videos for dominoes on how to prepare the mold. Now I have found that for me, now other people do the powder method and I used to do the powder method, but right now the only thing I do to prepare my mold after cleaning it, the only thing I do is use the alcohol, okay? I haven't used the powder in a minute. Um, I saw a lot of people complaining about the powder leaving a dullness to the um, dominoes with color. When I was using it, I didn't have that problem. The reason I stopped using it is because I had powder everywhere. And I didn't like to clean it up because I'm a messy crafter. So all I do is I just spray my molds. That's how I prepare my molds. I just like to spray my mold. Again, 91, 90 or above. The higher the concentrate of um, alcohol, the less water. So you know epoxy does not act well with water. So the less water. One other thing I wanted to tell you, and I'm not sure if I told you in the earlier video. When you're doing dominoes and they have that little concave area where it sinks in the reason it's sinking in not necessarily on these because these have another layer and i left the space in there purposely but if you fill up your dominoes and you have your um your decal on there and you think you filled it up and then you found that when you get ready to take them off it's dipped in the reason it's dipped in is because you released a lot of air bubbles. Okay, a lot of air bubbles were released. And so when that air bubble um, comes out and pop, that area is no longer full. So you have um, the air bubbles releasing. So the epoxy actually goes down. That's why it's good to actually look at your epoxy for the first um, at least I, well, I use to do it every 15 minutes, not so much with this epoxy that I'm using now, the marine epoxy, because I don't have any problem with bubbles. I do look, but not babysit, but it's important to look in there and, you know, do your alcohol, you spritz it when the bubbles come off, if they're not automatically bur bursting when they rise to the top, they should automatically burst. If they don't, you spritz it with some alcohol. <laughs> But that is the reason that your dominoes go down. I know a lot of people say, but dang, I know I feel that thing up, so why isn't it full now? So that is the reason them air bubbles pop. This is my first time using this. I might have overpoured it. Okay, so them air bubbles pop, and it actually, um, I need to cut this. The, it actually, that space is gone once the air bubbles pop. So, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more videos again. If you already haven't, please hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. If you didn't, it's okay to do a thumbs down. But if you do a thumbs down, please tell me what the problem is. It might be something that I can fix. So, you all have a good one. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.